For all the leaders in this room uh, that's attending today's ceremony, I right, thank you for being here. To the instructor staff that put on a hell of a course, hey, if you want a corporal's course done right, ask McCass to do it. This is the best corporal's course that I've seen on the five years I've been on this island. All right, the best. Uh, to the families that are here for the Marines, thank you for supporting your Marine. Uh, you do more for them than you know. So while I am here to talk to everybody, I'm specifically here to talk to you. To give you words of encouragement, maybe some guidance, something that will last you a lifetime. But to do that, I think it's best done through a story. Because Marines, well, Marines love story time. They love it. But we're going to go back. We're going to go back in time. We're going to go to 2003. All right, we're in 2003. There's a young corporal, young corporal of Marines. And so, um, you know, he's well-trained, PME complete. I mean, really answered his call to service. And he's thinking about getting out. He thinks it's his time to get out. He's like, man, I'm done with the organization. It's time for me to move on. But he's not entirely sure. So he has to seek some help, some guidance from his mentor. So he goes down to his mentor's office, and he knocks on the hatch three times. He says, first sergeant, it's me. Can you talk? So the first sergeant says, come in, sit down. Well, first sergeant's in there typing 120 words per minute. He's tasked out by Sergeant Major. The unit's about to push. And the Marine sits down in his chair. Well, he thinks he's about to disappoint his mentor. He takes a deep breath and says, First Sergeant, I think it's time for me to get out. I think I'm ready to move on. So First Sergeant slows down. He pushes the keyboard away from his body. He turns, turns a swivel in his chair. He looks this Marine deep down in his soul. He says, what's going on? And the Marine, he says, well, I, I feel like I've served my country. I've done my time and then some. And, and I think I'm just ready to get out. So First Sergeant says, well, what are you going to do? He says, well, I'm going to go to school. And we've heard that one before, right? <laughs> so it says, where are you going to live? Well, I'm going to move in with my mom and my dad. There's another one. And so the Marine has something left to say, but he can't get the words out of his mouth. And First Sergeant says, come on, just spit it out. What's going on? And he says, well, I'm just conflicted. First Sergeant says, what are you conflicted about? You came in here with the plan. You told me what you were going to do. What are you conflicted about? He says, well, I just don't know. There's like this weird turnover going on. I don't really have a replacement. I mean, I know the Marines can do it, but I want to deploy with them just one more time. And then by the time we get back, by the time we get back, everybody will be transitioning, PCSing, EASing, what have you. And so first start, he knows it's time to punch in to be the mentor that this Marine needs. So he looks at him, looks deep down into his soul, and says, listen, there's two types of people out there. One, there's fish. And fish, well, they swim with all the other fish. And they swim with the current of the ocean because they're not strong enough to swim against it. And they swim from rock to rock, eating shit at the bottom of the ocean, not knowing if they'll survive another meal. And two, they're sharks. And sharks, well, they don't need to be told they're sharks. They know they're sharks. When they wake up, they're on the hunt, eating meal to meal, and sometimes eating fish just as big as they are. And Marie, you don't need me to tell you what type of person you are. So with that, the Marine stands up, pulls his blouse down, reaches over the table, shakes his first sergeant's hand. He says, thank you, first sergeant. Have a good day. Marches out of that office, goes straight down to the career planner. He says, Sergeant, can you please help me? I need to extend or re-enlist. Whichever one I'm qualified to do, can you please help me? So the sergeant's got a desk full of packages. He says, Marine, this is last minute shit. We're about to push. You already made your decision. He said, please help me. I just want to deploy with my Marines one more time. So who's going to say no to that? That career planner prints off the realm, gives it to the Marine, and off he goes. Runs around the battalion, gets all his signatures, medical and dental, same day. Unheard of, right? <laughs> Unheard of. Comes back, gets that package to the command deck, and when it gets to the battalion commander, 
He endorses it without a doubt in his mind because he knows the caliber of Marine that he is. Off it goes, the timbers come back approved. Unit deploys. And so from that, there's two things I want you to take away. One, mentorship. From this point forward, you may be considered a mentor. And when a Marine is looking for guidance or help, be the mentor that he or she needs, not the one that they want. And two, help. It doesn't matter what you wear on your collar, you're never too old enough to ask for help. All right, if anything, it makes you a strong individual to say, hey, I need some help right now. Can somebody help me? Because you never know. You may save your life, or you may save the lives of the Marines around you. And I'd love to give everybody a happy ending to this story, but for some reason, we don't learn the same way we do from the sad ones. So we're in 2004, and that battalion commander, well, his convoy is getting harassed by small arms fire. And who do they call? They call 4th platoon. And that Marine, he steps up. So they go down, they investigate, they pull over these vehicles. One of the insurgents jumps out of them. They're wrestling back and forth. The Marine notices something's in his hand. The insurgent pulls a pin, rolls a grenade. The Marine doesn't think twice. He takes off his Kevlar, jumps on the grenade, and boom! It explodes. Now the Marine doesn't die there. He lives eight more days long enough for his mother and his father to see his soul leave this earth. So now fast forward. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Corporal Dunham, one of our own, a Medal of Honor recipient. So fast forward, we're at the memorial service. The entire command is there. And first sergeant, he's having a hard time keeping it together. He's fighting back tears as he's shaking the hands of Corporal Dunham's family. He finally gets to his mother, and so she's a wreck. She's fighting it back, fighting back the tears. And, and he just barely spits out these words to her. He says, ma'am, it, it was such an honor to have known your son. It was an honor and privilege to have served with them. And she goes, well, <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, I'm, who, who did you say you were? And he said, oh, I'm, I'm first sergeant such and such. I was your son's company first sergeant. And so she looks deep down in his soul, and she goes, I think my son used to talk about you. Did you tell him he was a shark or something? So it was at that moment that that leader knew that he had left a long-lasting positive impression on the Marines that he left the burden of leadership. And so I challenge you and help every leader in this room to leave a long-lasting positive impression on those that you lead. Be the legacy that you want to be spoken about 20, 30, 40 years down the road like we are today. Corporal's Course 1 Tac 23, congratulations and separate fellows.